As we get ready for our, uh, our scripture reading, we're going to have a reading that comes from uh, Paul's letter to the Romans this morning. And uh, if you have a Bible with you, it's in chapter, uh, what, chapter 12. And uh, Amanda's going to read that for us, so I'm going to get out of the way and, and let Amanda do our reading. Good morning. Don't just pretend to love others. Really love them. Hate what is wrong. Hold tightly to what is good. Love each other with genuine affection and take delight in honoring each other. Never be lazy, but work hard and serve the Lord enthusiastically. Rejoice in our confident hope. Be patient in trouble and keep on praying. When God's people are in need, be ready to help them. Always be eager to participate to practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Don't curse them. Pray that God will bless them. Be happy with those who are happy and weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with each other. Don't be too proud to enjoy the company of ordinary people. And don't think you know it all. Never pay back evil with more evil. Do things in such a way that everyone can see you are honorable. Do all that you can to live in peace with everyone. Dear friends, never take revenge. Leave that to the, right, the righteous anger of God. For the scripture says, I will take revenge. I will pay them back, says the Lord. Instead, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals of shame on their heads. Don't let evil conquer you, but conquer evil by doing good. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you. So, you know what I have right here? This is, this is a list of all the people who have ticked me off this week. Are you, are you ready to hear the offenses? Okay. Would the following people please stand up? I'm just kidding. This is a blank sheet. But I do have the list in my head. I, I, I do. I have the list of people who have uh, cut me off on the road. I have, a, I have people who have broken promises to me. I have people who looked at me the wrong way. People that I suspect may not like me. All these people are on my list in my head. And, uh, and, and I hate to say it, it goes back further than just a week. It, there's people from high school on my list. There's people from college on my list. There's, my list keeps getting longer and longer every day. Uh, please tell me that I'm not alone in this. Please tell me that you have lists of people too. You have, okay, you have a list of people. Now, sometimes the people on your list may include, um, may include family members. You know, sometimes they may have, you may have coworkers on there. You may have ex-boyfriends or ex-girlfriends or you may have former friends who have betrayed you. Um, some people who have hurt you in, in serious ways or maybe in, in not so serious ways. But I'm right, aren't I? I mean, we all have these lists of people that have pushed our buttons and people that get under our skin and people that irritate us and, and people that have gone behind our backs. We all have those lists, don't we? You know, one of the questions that pops into my head once in a while is, what am I gonna do with my list? You know, why, why, do, I keep, why do I keep my list around? Do I, do I keep my list as a reminder of the pain that others have caused me, the people that I need to avoid, lessons that I've learned? Is that why I'm keeping this list of, of people in my head? You know, and, and, and another question is, what happens to me if I get my list out too often and just read through these names? Does it, does it affect me? You know, what, what do we do with the list of people? Does it affect us when we go through these, this list too often? Does it affect us? I, 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 would, I would bet that it does. In fact, I would bet quite a bit that, 
that when we think about the pain that people have caused us, when people tell lies about us and when they, when they gossip about us and when they undermine us and, and when they do things to hurt us and when they just do things just to, to provoke us and, and to, to irritate us, when people do these things and we keep that pain and we just let it sit in our spirit, I would actually bet quite a bit that it's doing some damage to us. When we let that sit there and we go through that list in our mind, the people that have done these things to us, I would bet that it's doing some damage. And I bet, actually, the question isn't, is it affecting us? I, I, the real question is, how much damage is it doing to us when we keep this list around? How much damage is it doing? And how long before it really starts affecting who we are and who we are becoming? In the, in the reading that Amanda read just a little bit ago, Paul, Paul has this interesting thing to say. He, said, he says, don't let evil conquer you, but conquer evil by doing good. Don't let evil conquer you, he says. Don't let evil conquer you. You know, I've, I've read that passage dozens of times in my life, and I always have this idea that, that evil is out there and it's trying to get me. You know, and I, I, need to, I need to protect myself from that. And, and that's why Paul tells us to wear the armor of God and to, to be sure that we're connected to a community and to pray because evil is out there and it's trying to get me, right? I need to protect myself from the evil that, out there that's trying to get me. What if the evil that Paul is talking about, when he says, don't let evil conquer you, but conquer evil by doing good, what if the evil that he's talking about is not evil that's out there? What if the evil that's trying to get me is working from within me? What do, you think it, what do you think it looks like when evil conquers someone? You, yeah, I mean, it's anger. Do, do you think, this, does someone suddenly become like depraved when, when evil conquers them? Do they end up in prison? <laughs> is it easy to tell? Is it always easy to tell when evil has conquered someone? Is it always easy to tell? I don't, I'm not so sure. You know what I think Paul would say? I think Paul would say that evil conquers someone when that person stops treating others with love. Even people, maybe especially people that, that are on our lists. You know, evil begins the process of conquering us whenever I get my list out and I start going through the names. Evil gets a foothold in my life every time I start going through all the different ways that people have hurt me and every time I start thinking of how I can even up the score, evil, evil starts working its way in. Whenever I set love aside and I get my list out and I start focusing on all the different pains that have been caused, all the different people who have offended me, whenever I do that, evil does a little bit more work on me, a little bit more work in me until it's starting to change me. And it doesn't happen a lot. It doesn't happen all at once. But I think it happens a little bit over time. And that's why, that's why Paul says, he says, don't just pretend to love others. Really love them. Hate what is wrong. Hold tight to what is good. Love each other with genuine affection and take delight in honoring each other. And you know, that's, that's all well and good when I like those people. But my love isn't usually tested by the people I like. My love is tested by the people on my list. My, my love is tested by people that I don't think deserve my love. And so I kind of set myself up as a judge, you know? And I, I decide who gets my love and who gets my disdain. Don't, I mean, don't we do this? We tend to do this, don't we? We kind of decide in our minds who deserves our love and, and who doesn't deserve our love. Should I be doing this? Is that good for me? Is that what I'm supposed to be doing? Not according to Paul, and, and not according to Jesus. Jesus says that we're supposed to love our enemies, right? Isn't that what Jesus tells us to do? He says to love our enemies. And, I, and, and it's easy for me to kind of just say, well, maybe, maybe I'm misunderstanding him. You know, maybe, maybe he didn't really mean it that way. So in case I think that, this is what Paul says. Paul says, bless those who persecute you. Don't curse them. Pray that God will bless them. Again, Paul says, never pay back evil with more evil. Again, Paul says, dear friends, 
Never take revenge. Leave that to the righteous anger of God. Instead, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they're thirsty, give them something to drink. You know, I mean, three times in this, in this one little passage today, Paul really hammers this home that it's important that we love those that we don't like. Why is this such a big deal? Why is this important? You want to know why? I'll tell you. I'll tell, yeah, yeah. That's exactly right. Because evil is trying to conquer us. And, and, and the truth is, the truth is that every single one of us here is a work in progress. Every one of us is a work in progress. And the people that we are becoming is being formed day by day right now. There's, there are two forces that are working at you right now, trying to get you to be a certain type of person. Love and selfishness. Love and selfishness are both working in you, trying to get you to be a certain kind of person. And so every time we look at our list, and every time we allow someone on this list, their, their aggression, their anger, their, their animosity, whenever we let them determine our actions, whenever we let them affect us, we're letting selfishness lead us in a certain direction. But every time we set that list aside, and we focus on what Paul's talking about, and we love people, even those that we don't like, if we love them, we're letting that love chisel away a little bit at, at the negative influences in our lives. And it's not easy. This is not easy to do this. It's easy to talk about. I can, it's easy for me to say, love your enemies. Easy to say it. It is not easy to do this. And this, that's why Paul says it's not good enough to pretend that we love each other. It is not good enough to pretend that we love others. Love has got to be genuine. And when it is genuine, when it is, wow, that is, that's a powerful transforming agent in our lives. But it is, it is, it is one thing to talk about it. It's another thing to do it. It's one thing to, you know, take driver's ed classes, study the manual, watch videos on driving. It is another thing to get out on the highway. Right? And so if we, want to, if we want to be serious about pushing selfishness aside so that love can lead us, if we want to be serious about conquering evil so that evil does not conquer us, you know what we've got to do? We've got to recognize the picture of who God wants us to become. God has a picture in mind of who he wants us to be. Now when we, when we become saved, when we become um, saved as believers, that happens in an instant. The moment you take hold of Jesus and trust in him as your savior, boom, you're saved instantaneously. The process of becoming more and more like him does not happen in an instant. And so God has this picture in mind of every single one of us. He has a picture in mind of, of how Brian could look, should look. He's got a picture of Jane. He's got a picture of Amanda. He's got a picture of Rob. And it's not a picture as we are right now. It's a picture of who we could be. It's a picture of who we should be. It's a picture of who, who he wants us to be. Now, God loves us as we are right now, right? He loves us as we are. Just like I love, I love my kids as they are right now. I love them as they are right now. But what I want is I want my kids to keep developing to become a godly man and a godly woman. Do you guys understand that? That's exactly the way God wants it for us. He loves us as we are right now. But in his mind, God has a picture of who we could be and who we should be. Now, whether or not that becomes a reality is left up to us. We have a lot, a lot to say about that. And then if we want to honor God, not only with who we are now, but who we are becoming, then recognizing that picture of who God wants us to be has got to be what drives us. We open ourselves up to the love instead of selfishness that is forming who we are becoming. Okay, so keep an image in your mind of who you could be, who you should be, who God wants you to be, and then think about in your life right now, what are the things and who are the people in your life that are moving you towards that? What are the things, who are the people that are moving you away from that? Okay, recognizing the picture is the first thing. The other way that we put this into practice is by taking your list and dealing with it. All these people that are on here, 
all these people that have, that have pushed your buttons and have irritated you, not just this last week, but maybe it was, maybe it was five years ago or 10 years ago, these people that, that we hold on to and we like to recite their names and we kind of grit our teeth every time we think about them, you know? Spencer said this brings about anger inside of us. Do you know every time you get that list out, those people are affecting who you are becoming. Do you guys see that? Do you guys see that? This list is the evil that Paul is talking about. When he says, don't let evil conquer you, but conquer evil by doing good. This list is the evil. Those people in your minds. Don't let them and don't let the pain that they've caused or maybe the pain that they're still causing, don't let that determine who you're becoming. Lift that list up to God. Let him cover it in love. Now this is not, this is not saying that you need to patch things up with everyone on your list. It's not saying that you need to patch things up. If there are people on there that abuse you, if there are people on your list that take advantage of you on a regular basis or habitually hurt you, those people should be cut out of your life. But don't keep them on the list. Erase them so they don't have any power over you. You know, pray for them. Pray for, ask God to bless them. Ask God to heal them. Ask God to help them and you love them in that way. But don't hold a grudge and don't let them affect who you are becoming. You know, this is what it means. This is what it means to really love people and not just pretend to love them. We keep a goal in mind of who we want to be, who God wants us to be, who we should be, and we let love guide us instead of letting evil guide us, especially when it comes to those people that really get under our skin. Again, I mean, and again, like I said, this is not easy to do. This is not easy to do. But every single one of us here has a choice in this. And every time we talk behind someone's back, Every time we find some secret way of getting back at someone, we are opening the door just a little bit more for evil to conquer us. Don't let that happen. Love even those that you dislike. And start this week. I mean, get your list and just pick one name and pray for that person. Just pray for them. Pray for God to bless them. Pray for God to help them. Pray for God to heal them. And just lift your list up to God and let the Holy Spirit deal with it. Don't let evil conquer you. Conquer evil by doing good. Choose love. I'm going to invite you to pray with me this morning as our ushers come up to collect our offering. Father, we, we choose love. We choose love because we want to be the people that you have made us to be and the people that you have called us to be. You are love. And when we allow you to transform us, we become love as well. And as hard as this is to do, we pray for our enemies. We pray for those who hurt us. We pray for those who provoke us. And we lift them up to you so that they can have no more power over who we are becoming. Father, receive our offerings this morning. Receive our tithes. Receive our gifts. And use them to love and to bless others in Jesus' name. Amen.